some fine hair thoughts before we start cutting. This point up, it doesn't really look weak. It's really from the neck down or the shoulder uh, point down where this is a little bit weaker. So I would look at and assess where the hair starts to get a little less dense, a little weaker towards the ends. And then that's where I wanna base my haircut. I'm gonna do this dry today because I wanna be able to see the density as I'm working. I'm gonna do the sectioning and then I'm gonna break it down over on the board. Basically going from recession point back to the occipital bone and I'm going to draw a curved line from this point back to the occipital bone. So right here, comb the hair in the direction I want to take it. And then I draw a curved line back. It's like that. I'll hold the rest of the hair in my hand. Now we're going to come across the occipital bone. And then I'm going to draw a line on the opposite side and meet. So now as I comb it up in the air, I'm just looking for balance on both sides. So I want to make sure both of these sides match up, twist it, clip it away. Now I'm gonna go through and just assess the bottom. You're gonna have more density in this area than you are in the ends because some of this hair is already just growing back from breaking through blow drying, ironing, all of that stuff. Just kind of meeting it up with the hair that has broken off a little bit. That's just gonna give you more density. Number one is to get it to a length where your hair likes to stay dense. I'm gonna say this is about shoulder length is a good uh, length for somebody with fine hair or go shorter, but go longer is just it, your hair is just not going to look as full. You're going to add a little bit of neuro protect to this bottom section and I'm going to iron over it just to smooth it out because I'm going to cut a nice baseline to begin with. I've got the hair smoothed out and we're going to cut one length. We sectioned off this disconnection. That's what we're dealing with right now. So what we're going to do with all of this hair underneath, we're going to pull that hair straight down and cut it blunt at the length that we want it. What that's going to do is it's going to keep all of the density at that length and we're going to cut our line. We also want to add layers to this fine hair to create some movement, but I don't want to take away and layer all of it. Cutting it one length is going to keep it full and then we'll start layering the top. I'm going to do all the top is going to be brought straight up cut into kind of a square layer on the top of the head. I'm going to use a wider tooth comb because I'm cutting it dry and I don't want to hold too much tension on the hair. I really just want to comb it down to control it. You can't see really anything from this point over, but then when you get here, you really start to see through the hair and even more at this point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold the comb down wide teeth right here, and I'm going to go through and I'm going to cut my blunt line on the bottom. Look how full this looks compared to how weak this looks right here. That's going to give you a much fuller effect in fine hair. And then you can go through and you can obviously give this a little wand iron to build it up, but it's going to have it nice and thick. If I were to elevate that part of the head, what's going to happen is it would lighten up the ends. It would make it feel way less full. So here we go. Moving around the head. I'm shifting over into the corner. I'm going to cut a round line around the head shape. There we go. Nice blunt feel to the haircut. I'm not worried about total outcome of that yet because I'm going to go through and do the rest of the cut and then I'll work that perimeter even more. So now we've got our length cut. I'm going to go through and work the top section. I'm going to let this down for now and you'll see it kind of come over everything. You'll see that that's hitting right where that density I was talking about. So where it gets a little bit thinner. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to comb this into a couple sections. So here's the parting part right there. And then I'm going to find what splits the front and back. So right here, down to the hairline. This is kind of the hair that's going to sit in the back of the head. So I'll clip the rest of this away. I'm going to do the same thing on the opposite side over here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to elevate it up. So I'm going to stand on the left-hand side of the head, vertical section, straight down the center back. I'm going to bring this up. Now my guide, I will see kind of from the bottom, you can decide, do you want to cut at that guideline here or do you want to go a little bit past it? If you go past it, it's going to push hair below the, um, the perimeter line. That's okay. You can always go in and point cut that or cut it blunt at the end. And that's what I'm going to choose to do because I want to push a little extra weight to the bottom. So here we go up like that. The guideline falls out and now I'm going to go in and I'm going to point cut through the hair. Take a look. When you take away these pieces, how full the back of this looks. It's got that fullness to it. Um, and that's the same thing I want to do on both sides. This side now, I'm going to bring it up to the center. Guideline falls out. Now what's happening when I pull this hair up into the center? It's over directing. When we over direct, it pushes weight away from where we're pulling it to. So if I'm pulling it towards my body, it's going to push the most weight away from my body. So right here, bring this hair up, cut line and you can see how this starts to build a really nice kind of lob shaped. One of the things I like to do with point cutting is point towards your buddy then back at your body, towards your buddy, back at your body. And that's how you cut. You don't want to come this way, lifting your elbow 
elbow up and cutting into it because look what happens as i cut into it that blade is attacking my finger if i shift it like this my elbow goes down so i'm more comfortable and then the blade that's coming out my finger is being blocked by the steady blade. If you wanna cut a precise line when point cutting, you're gonna go in and come at more of an angle and you can work that precise line. The more of an angle, it gets more T to the section. This is gonna take out very little weight. Like this, I'm not taking out any hair. If I wanna remove, this takes out quite a bit of hair. Draw your line across and then just come directly in like this and soften that line. I'm gonna take my guest, I'm gonna tell her to tilt her head just slightly towards me like this in the chair. I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna grab all of this hair. I'm gonna lift it up over her head and I can see the guideline start to fall out. So when I start seeing that and I can see it kind of through here, see my guide from the rest, I can go through, lift it up, and point cut my length across. Now we're gonna do the same thing on the opposite side. So now we've got a nice medium length haircut that has a really solid foundation in the base area here, but then the layers that just fall over top of it that have a ton of movement because of the point cutting. Now what I wanna do is I wanna go through here in this area right here, and I want to kind of fine tune it just by bringing this hair down and cutting into, with a point cut technique, a little bit of that baseline of the hair. Comb down, wide teeth through the hair, and I'm just going to soften that line around the perimeter. So she parts over to this side here, so she's gonna have a little bit different lengths um, because one side has this much hair and the other side has, you know, this much hair. But I can see my guide right through there and that's what I'm aiming for. I just wanna be a little organic with the way that I pull these pieces out. And then I'm just gonna softly bring it around the iron and I wanna put it in kind of a ribbon motion. So not putting it all together. What I mean by don't just kind of clump it all together is take a section and wrap it kind of on top of itself like this, unless you're looking for tighter curls. If you're just looking to add a little bit of wave to the hair, in turn will create some fullness. And I'm not leaving the hair in it too long. For one, I don't want to create damage. Two, you don't need to. I'm just creating a soft kind of defined wave in the hair. So you can see kind of the blunt edge of it how it really kind of works through allowing the fullness on the bottom, but tons of movement throughout the rest. So, you know, if somebody had even finer hair than this, then what I would say is go through it and just don't elevate these layers as much. So don't pull them straight up to the ceiling, pull them out like here, and then build the weight off of that perimeter line. And then you'd have a full uh, feeling throughout here. You wouldn't have these shorter pieces within the cut. So that would give it even more fullness as you uh, kind of work through it.